All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So, if you cannot tell, which I hope you can tell because you're just looking at the screen right now, look at the image. We review an ritual monster, so you get that two for one. Of course, we're going to be reviewing the ritual monster and the ritual spell. Because, you know, these days, these ritual spells are getting these bonus effects. You know, it's not like back in the original Yu Gi Oh! the first pack, or I don't, I don't remember what pack rituals came in, where it's just like, hey, you know, use this ritual card to summon this ritual monster. Good job. And then, then even the ritual monster, you know, in fact, now, not only do we get effects on the ritual monsters, but generally we get these, you know, these effects on the on the ritual spells as well. And, of course, we know the power of Necros, so uh, let's see if Konami can run it back with a, you know, a decently good ritual monster after the travesty that we had, which was Necros. Just my personal opinion. So, today we are looking at Radiant Divine Bird v Veni? Vini? Vini? I think it's Vene? I want to say Vene? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, light fairy ritual effect type monster at level 8. 2800 attack, 2000 defense. So attack's pretty good. Attack's pretty good. Um, if I agree, you can ritual summon this card with Primal Cry. Pause. Let's go ahead and look at Primal Cry. Primal Cry is a ritual spell that reads. This card can be used to ritual summon divine, uh, Radiant Divine Bird uh, Vene. You must also tribute monster from your hand or field whose total level equals 8 or more. Alright, so uh, regular ritual summoning. Nothing special about that. But... Like I said, these ritual spells are getting they're getting the bonus effects. So what's this card's bonus effect? During your end phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one ritual monster in your graveyard that was sent there from the field this turn. Special summon it. All right. So uh, maybe go ahead and do a double ritual summon or or a synchro summon or a synchro summon. So let's go back to Radiant Bird and see if it has synergy with Primal Cry. So, the effect reads, once per turn, you can reveal one monster in your hand, then target one face-up monster on the field. This turn, that target's level becomes the revealed monster's level. Alright, so, as I said, either you do another uh, another ritual summon and tribute, you know, another uh, ritual monster for an additional ritual summon, or maybe some synchro summon shenanigans as well. So, ritual and synchro seems pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So, you can go ahead and ritual summon this, then you can, like, summon a tuner. You know, normal, like normal summon a tuner. Use the effect. We'll go ahead and reveal a monster in your hand. Make this card or the tuner level, whatever, modulate. Then synchro summon, right? Then during the end phase, banish Primal Cry to go ahead and target one ritual monster in your graveyard that was sent that, from the field this turn, i.e. Divine uh, Radiant Divine Bird. There's to summon it. Simple as that. But this card also has another effect. Once per turn, if another monster monsters in your hand or your side of field is tributed, except during damage step, you could target one monster you're going to add that back to your hand. So, uh, it seems like it's either for an additional ritual summon or an additional uh, synchro summon, but it seems like it's, it's saying like, hey, once you do this ritual summon, do another one, another one, all right? <laughs> uh, because uh, monsters that, monster monsters that were uh, tributed from your hand or your side of field, generally by a uh, ritual summon, you can go ahead and target one of the monsters and get it back to your hand. Get your resources back for the uh, the additional uh, uh, ritual summon. So it's pretty much just feeding back your tribute summon. So, hey, it's saying like, hey, ritual summon. Okay, now ritual summon again, and uh, I'll give you your shit back. Not only will I go ahead and give you one of your target, one of the monsters back that you use as a tribute for your second ritual summon while this card in the field, but if uh, this card was actually used as the Ritual Summon as well, or whatever additional uh, Ritual Summon tribute. Uh, you can go ahead and target one Ritual Monster in your graveyard that was sent there from the field. Keep in mind, the field. Uh, that's the reason why I didn't say anything about Xeen, because, of course, when you see you're not on the field anymore. That'd be great if it was, you know, it's like summon one of this, summon another one, it just said target one Ritual Monster in a graveyard that was sent there this turn, special summon it. That'd be great, because then you can go ahead and, like, Xeen into, like, maybe, like, Felgrand or something like that, then detach, and then... Uh, Go ahead and get the monster back, but no, it says from the field this turn. So, uh, also, it just seems like it's just hey, do another ritual summon and get your resources back, which isn't terrible, and especially for a 28 beater. But uh, it just you know it doesn't have that. Oomph. Uh, definitely helps that you know it does us the monster, the pri the primal cry, and all that. So uh, definitely going to be seeing some of that pre preparation of rights, which will definitely help. But I'm just not sure if this card is worth the effort to focus an entire deck on or to throw into a ritual based deck, which of course ritual mechanics are not strong enough. But uh, you know, it helps. This card helps, you know, ritual mechanics weak, well yeah, what are their weaknesses? Well, uh, they have a hard time getting both the monster and the ritual spell to their hand. Pre preparation rights. Alright, next. Uh, well they got a tribute from the hand of field and neg on their place. Alright, well, uh, how about this monster says that you get your shit back? Okay, well, 
uh, it's not going to be on the field yet. So uh, maybe if I do an additional tribute summon or additional tribute when I hand it to the field, uh, or when I tribute a ritual monster, if I decide to do that, can I get it back? Hey, sure, go ahead. During your end phase, go ahead and banish this card, uh, primal card from your graveyard, get the ritual monster that was sent from the field uh, this turn, summon it back. So. Uh, it, it's work. It's a work in progress. It really is. It's, it's in my opinion, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, there's a thin line. There's really a thin line between just uh, these mechanics, these underrated mechanics such as uh, rituals and fusions. For thin line between being like, eh, no, I'm not doing that crap, or oh my god, there's no P. Let's go, you know. Because like I said, look at Gishkis and Gem Knights. Kind of meh, really. But then they took it a step farther. Look at Shadows and look at Necros. All right, now we got the ball rolling, you know. So, uh, yeah, just thin line. So, uh, after the hitting of Necros, of course, this card's after hitting uh, Necros. Uh, let's see what they can do with the ritual mechanic. And I think this is a step in the right direction. Getting your resources back is definitely a good combination combined with getting the cards that you need with a pre-preparation right. So, good job, Konami. Good job. So, tell me what you guys think about this card in the comment section below. Of course, we'll be back next week with some more card review. Oh my god, we are scraping the fuck out of the barrel. I know you're probably like, oh, we're using Dark Magician cards, but they're like more of an archetype thing, so I don't want to review the cards individually. I've been trying to step away from that. I'm trying to review cards in their own merit outside of archetypes, so I don't like saying like, oh, this card's only good if it's in this archetype and doing these plays, you know. But as of late, there really hasn't been any non-archetypal cards. So, I don't know. I said, card review can be anything. We can review banned cards, we can review current cards, we can review meta calls, we can do whatever, so... It doesn't have to be new, it's just generally things are new and shiny and interesting, so I like to review new cards just to talk about new cards. So I'll figure something out for this upcoming week. I'll find something, so don't, you don't worry about it. If you want to suggest something, more power to you, but don't worry about it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and yeah, see you guys next week with some more card review. Thanks for watching.